Welcome. On the menu today? Were you in the pool? I love your floppy ears, don't worry. Oh, hello Chip Dippers. We've recently been having fun here at Retro Recipes with the C64 Maxi. Zap64 kindly sent me this one for a four page article I'm writing for the next annual. More on that soon. And it's pretty cool that Retro Games just announced that the VIC-20 is available for pre-order. See the link in the description. And whilst this thing looks great with that real keyboard and great bin styling and that colorful logo badge, for me, there's one thing missing. Now the fact that you can load games via a USB stick by putting it in this hole is amazing, but also I kind of long for the real nostalgic experience and the sights and sounds of a floppy disk drive like the Commodore 1541. Now supposedly it should be possible to get a USB 3.5 inch floppy disk drive working via that USB port, but I keep seeing messages online from people who just say it doesn't work. So who is right? Well, let's format a floppy disk in Windows. You just plug in the USB drive, and these are still readily available on Amazon and still manufactured today. And once you insert a floppy disk as you saw there, it appears as a device in Windows ready to format. Is it going to work? Well, now we just eject it. I don't even need to eject the disc. This whole thing is the disc. All right, now we just connect the floppy drive into that same port. Of course, it's always the third way around with the USB. And the hope is we should see the USB icon appear right here. Right here. The little icon's going to come up. It's got to come up. Come up. But <sighs> Well, this is quite a flop. <clears throat> well, let's bring in an expert. I've teamed up with YouTube channel Mike's Retro Tech. I'm not sure what the guy's name is though, to try to figure this out properly, as he's done a lot of experimenting with this subject. You're probably familiar with the disk file format FAT32. I'm not being offensive. I mean, we've all put on a bit of weight during quarantine. What I'm referring to is file allocation tables. And back in the day, floppy disks used FAT12. The main difference is FAT12 allowed up to 16 megabytes, whereas FAT16 allowed a whopping two gigabytes. That's a lot of floppy disks. And FAT32 allows two terabytes, 2000 times taller than that stack. So our thinking is, is Windows doing something strange when trying to format these 1.44 megabyte high density three and a half inch disks in the old FAT12 format? Well, I guess to test this, we could try it on a Mac. Always the third way around with USB. All right, let's see if this works. <laughs> yes. All right, guys, we are getting somewhere. And with this disc fitting 1.44 megabytes, we should be able to copy seven games, because they're about 176 kilobytes each onto that disc. So let's do that and then go back to the Maxi and open up that special USB icon. Exciting. For the all important test, did you know it's the sixth anniversary of PCBWay? Now's the time to try their celebration pricing and coupons. 
because as we all know, PCP stands for Perifractic Clicks His Box, doesn't it? Okay, so I've got the C64 joystick with the special buttons. Let's select the USB and see. USB C. Wow. Fingers crossed. I didn't think I'd be starring in this part of the episode, but here we are. Whoa. Wow! That is music to my ears, well, obviously. Guys, we have loaded a game of floppy disk onto a brand new Commodore 64. I am... This is amazing! Sorry, string fellow. Wow. <laughs> How is this possible? Well, before we try a few final games, although it sounds like a floppy drive, I really want to recapture the look of one too. And it occurs to me that if I set the front of this black floppy drive inside a shrunken down 3D printed case, it might look just like the front of the real 1541. So let's make a few adjustments to this incredible free model from Salvo Bertolami. Coming up in just a second. We have to abort the print because, <laughs> uh, oh dear, that isn't working very well, is it? Well, at least we've got a nice little Commodore logo. Come on, little guy.
bien. ¿eh? Ahí está él. I'm really happy with how this is coming along, but there is still one thing missing. You'll notice I chose an all black three and a half inch disc, and I did that so that with the right label, it might look a little more like an original five and a quarter inch disc that Commodore games were released on. One of the games I put on the disc was Sanction, Sanction, Sanction? Well, anyway, let's scan that label and shrink it down by the same scale as we shrunk down the drive to stick it on our floppy. shrunk my five and a quarter inches into three and a half. Were you in the pool? No, no, no. It's okay. It's, it's hard now. It used to be floppy. Wait, what are we talking about? My discs. I shrunk my five and a quarter inch disc into three and a half inch half one. Yeah, that's uh, what I was talking about. Of course you were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, either way, somehow in 13 minutes, we've gone from this to this. Now, as you may know, the real 1541 disk drive is essentially the same size as the Commodore 64. Oh, didn't I mention? If you put what we just created next to the C64 Mini, it's an exact scale replica of the Commodore 64 and its disk drive. Oh, and I know it's a bit hard to tell, so here's a banana for scale. Well, there it is. A 1541 Mini. In a second, we'll play some more games using that drive. And by the way, if you'd like to recreate this project, I've put all my models and parts online. Just follow the link in the description. No charge, of course. Though if you would like to support this channel in return for rewards like early access and much more, check out the Patreon link below, or click join below this video for channel membership. It's basically YouTube's version of Patreon. So let's quickly go back to the arcade. And the fun thing I noticed is when I plugged in the C64 Mini, the floppy drive started whirring just like it would when you turned on a real Commodore 64. So we've got our real kind of Zhangxian disk in. Let's just have some fun. I'm going to see if I can load the disk structure and have this whole setup in the Maxi treat this just as a real floppy disk without using that special carousel to load games. Let's go ahead and select media access right there. And we should, by the look of it, be able to just mount the sanctioned disk image in what the C64 sees as the real disk drive slot. And there it is. And that's weird, it didn't access the disk, so it was all in memory by that point. So we can just go up, substitute load in front of there. 
comma one. So the disk isn't accessing at all now, so it had already loaded the whole disk into memory. And I wonder if that's because it's in D64 file structure. It's much quicker than normal. So all we can do now is run it. Fingers crossed. Hello. <laughs> all right, got our little trainer, hit space. Guys, I love this so much. I'm using a real floppy drive to load my favorite games. Games I haven't played for a long time, as you can tell. <sighs> well, I guess I got the high score at least. Bit of a similar game this time, Gold Runner. Do you remember the speech in this? So awesome. And if what I said was correct, this will already be in the memory, ready to go. Yep, and again, no disk access. It's already there. <laughs> Love that. Oh yeah, I used to die before the game even started sometimes. Can't even get to the good bit of the music. <laughs> what do you mean I'm cheating? So this is another game that I, I think I found it in the budget bin. Um, it's a really cute little game. I don't know how else to describe it apart from you are PC fuzz arresting the baddies. Oh, baddie got me. Ah oh, yes, the pogo jumping punk rocker. There you go, PC fuzz. Oh, there you are. Well, I think that's almost enough playing with our floppies for one day. Uh, I'm going to play out with a quick read through from the intro of the game Dracula, which I also put on that disc. Uh, if you may remember, that was the first game ever to carry a parental guidance warning, at least in the UK. But here in America, there's no such warnings, so enjoy that. As always, thanks for watching. Subscribe and join below. And cheerio. Here at last. But it is a wild, untamed landscape that seems only grudgingly to tolerate the torturous coach tracks that wind through it, like arteries hurrying tired and travel-weary fares to their destinations, maybe even their destinies. Strange that I should think that, but again, as I leave the coach, the sinister fear of something as yet unknown steals over me. Bah! I am behaving like a child. I must pull myself to- ah! F***ing Dracula.